Welcome to On Security. Conversations with the world's leading security technologists. exactly how that works but there is something going on because uh, just a friend of mine actually he a uh, friend of the family he's he's got a, a 20 year old son who has no he lost his job and uh, won't go to college if you know failing school uh, he's addicted to World of Warcraft and so you got to you know wonder you know why is that more important than having a real life it's that maintained ongoing presence online where there's a status associated with your character and you're always trying to build it. Uh, you play an Unreal Tournament match, you know in 35 minutes you'll the game is over and you can get up and go eat dinner or whatever. It's not like that with an online game. You just keep playing and playing until you're, you know, you're practically asleep at the keyboard. In fact, someone died at the keyboard, I think. They didn't drink water. Something happened like, and they actually fell down dead playing World of Warcraft. And there's a couple of other weird stories like that where someone stole, this is I think from Lineage 2, a different MMO that's very you know addictive and have a lot of players. Uh, someone stole some sword, some magic sword from somebody else and he went to the cyber cafe and shot the guy. And he went to jail for life for that. So they take it very seriously. <laughs> Online games, especially MMOs, are probably one of the if not the most advanced multi-user application ever built. Um, you have other online hosted applications like your accounting system might be through QuickBooks or something like that, but those are web-based. These are complete standalone clients with their own protocols and they have a lot more traffic going over the system and they have a lot more simultaneous users. And so if the people who built these games come up with good, secure methods of reducing risk and, and costs associated with hacking. They should be writing papers on this because the people who build other non-gaming applications can learn a lot from the architecture and the approaches that they're taking to solving the hacking problem. Well, I think a lot of people don't realize that it's a real, what a big business it is. Um, they might think of gaming and they think of all those kids that go to the EB games and play Xbox and all that and they don't see that as a serious market or anything. But in fact, there's billions of dollars being made. Uh, Hollywood's gonna get, in, has got into this already. And so when they start building virtual worlds, this is start replacing television. So we're just at the very beginning of this. Uh, so the, yeah, we're at the very beginning. This is the most advanced online application ever. Uh, far more advanced than anything else that's ever been built. Uh, there's going to be a lot of money being made over the next five to ten years in this market. It's going to explode. Uh, everybody's going to try to replicate what Blizzard's done. I don't know if they'll be successful because there's going to be a lot more players trying to play that game. Hollywood's going to try to leverage uh, branding to get it. You know, Instead of just having some nerdy little game, they're going to say, well, this is the Conan game or whatever you know, marketable name, whole storyline behind it, Terminator, whatever they pick. And, uh, you know, Lord of the Rings is an example. They have an MMO that's coming out. Just do a Google search. I mean, you'll, you'll get tons of hits. Uh, Edge of Nowhere is a site that has a lot of technical information. It's all in discussion threads. It's not like a easy to browse website. But, you know, there's a lot of nuggets of information in there. You can search for known hacking programs uh, on Google and find other threads that are associated with hacking. Uh, let me think. Uh, Glider is one program that you could do a search on. Wow Glider. Another one is Wow Sharp. Uh, these, if you just look for World of Warcraft botting programs like that, and then you find references and just follow out. So I guess I don't have one definitive site. The explosion of World of Warcraft was what kind of made me realize this is huge. There's something new happening here. Uh, my own desire to hack it, uh, which you know, I, I was playing beta accounts before it was even out yet, 
and I had started botting that game close to a year before I even really started intermingling with other people writing bots. So I had a lot of material already developed that was made it easier to create a book because I could start just throwing code in. The book actually isn't as technical as I wanted it to be. I've probably got 20% maybe smattering of all the code I actually have, but the book would be a huge volume. I mean, we'd be like the size of Hacking Exposed version 12, you know, like this giant volume. So just didn't have time to throw it all in. Maybe we'll do a second edition or something. Well, it's going to be a hot topic because there isn't any books on hacking these big games yet. So we'll probably be the first on the street. Unless someone else is working on one right now we don't know about. When does it come out? Hopefully in a few weeks. We don't actually have a pub date yet, but the book is done. We're actually just doing final reviews and, you know, little tweaks. Getting permissions for a couple of screenshots I haven't hunted down the authors for yet. Things like that. Cool. Hacking online games is fun. Buy a separate account. Don't blow your level 60 character trying out one of my tricks. But buy something, get a game card account, and have some fun. Because it, it's a blast when you figure out how to telehack or go underwater without dying or jump off a cliff and fall 5,000 feet without any damage. Or the ability to run faster than that, that horde character that's been punking you for the last hour and you can totally run away from him. And when you get that power, you feel like God. <laughs> Actually, what's fun right now is my buddies and I, we've been, we've been focusing on, not on World of Warcraft at all, but EVE Online and the new one that just came out, Vanguard. Total telehacking, completely working. And it's like, the, it's completely... Uh, nobody can defend against it, it's, especially with EVE Online, you know, you instantly teleport in, destroy them, teleport out. And they don't have any facilities for detecting hacks, not like World of Warcraft where they have the warden watching out all the time. No, nope. these guys are like the little tadpole in the, you know, out there and, you know, they don't have any concept with this yet. So hopefully they get, get something soon, but right now they're, they're just shooting ducks in a barrel. So. We've had offers, uh, never willing to pay the price that it actually would cost. Uh, I think they expect to pay $10,000 and have a solution. Well, that isn't going to happen. It's very expensive to build this kind of technology. Uh, a game hack actually is very expensive. It's just the guy writing it spending nights and weekends, and he's not charging anybody. And you know, It's a labor of love and passion for him, so he doesn't get paid, and you don't really realize how expensive it would have been if he had been charging you know, $80 an hour for his services. <laughs> Hundreds of hours may not even come close because then you also get people who contribute and they're small groups. So uh, the professionals should you know borrow from that, but building professional software, you know, have QA and all these other things that have to be done. So yeah, it's very expensive. There is a company called um, maybe they're called InProtect, or maybe that's their that's their product name, InProtect. But they have a solution that can be used by online games as turnkey. So that might be a good starting place. If you're building an online game, you might want to look at that. And Punk Buster is another game protection technology that maybe you can just use and not have to spend all that money. For more information, visit onpodcastweekly.com and subscribe to all our podcasts. Brought to you by the publishing imprints and information portal of Pearson Education.